right, in this video, we're gonna do a mixed review part three for the ATIT's math T6, and these problems are gonna be similar to problems eight through 10 found in the mathematics section quiz in the ATIT study manual. So this problem here, here, and here. These are gonna be dealing with uh, some percentages and some conversions. And uh, these are gonna be different than what you see in your manual, but again, these are gonna be similar, and the more practice you get, the better. Also, check out idomath.weebly.com or check out my YouTube channel for more tease review videos. So problem number eight, a new cell phone has just been released and many retailers are offering discounts or lower prices to compete. Retailer number one has the phone priced at 8% off of the MSRP of 975. Retailer number two lists the price at 900 bucks. Retailer number three has the price listed at $950, but if you buy it within the next 10 days, you can take 40 bucks off of that price. Which retailer has the best price right now? So um, I'm saying right now because, you know, we had this deal going on right here within the next 10 days. So let's look at retailer number one. So retailer number one has the phone priced at 8% off of the MSRP of 975. What we can do, a quick way to handle percentages, and I dive into this in the goals and objectives over at my website, idomath.weebly.com, but a quick way to find percentages of a number. We want to find 8% of 975 dollars. So a quick way to do this is first of all, on your four function calculator, make sure you convert the percent to a decimal. One way to do that is to take the 8%, divide it by 100, but the shortcut really is to just move your decimal two places to the left. That's how we're getting that 0.08. Now to find a percentage of a number, we want to multiply by 975 and we get a number that's 78. So $78, what is this telling us here? That is not going to be the price that you're gonna pay for that phone. If you paid $78 for a $975 phone, you're getting a heck of a deal, right? So this is actually the discount that we're getting. So to find the price that we're gonna pay, we're gonna take the 975 and let's subtract the 78 from it. That's gonna be how much money you're going to pay. So 975 minus 78, that's what, 897. And I hope that makes a little bit more sense there too, because if you say 78 bucks, that, that's way too cheap um, considering you're only getting 8% off. So taking that 975 minus the 78, Notice we do get the 897. So that's gonna be the price that you pay for the phone for retailer number one. Now, I'm throwing, I'm assuming that we're not talking about sales tax. We're gonna throw that out the window for right now. We're just talking about what's that price before tax. So maybe I should have put that in the question, but 897 is the price you're gonna pay. Now, let me give you a little shortcut here that you can do to get, or to go straight to $897 without messing with the 8%. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So if you're getting 8% off, if we take 100% and we subtract 8% or 100 minus eight, you're gonna pay 92% of the MSRP. That's how much you're left to pay. If you get 8% off, we subtract that from 100, you're gonna pay the remaining 92%. So converting that to a percentage, that's 0.92. You have to do that on your four function calculator, or you can just move your decimal two places to the left. If we take 92% of the MSRP of 975, check this out. You go straight to the price. So that's a shortcut that you can take there. Two ways of approaching the same problem. 8% of a number, that's gonna give us our discount, we have to subtract that from the MSRP. Or if you can understand that, hey, if we get 8% off and we're paying the remaining 92%, if you go ahead and multiply 92% times 975, you go straight to your answer. Retailer number two. Retailer number two, no tricks here. They just list the price at 900 bucks, no sales, no nothing. And um, you know, one would look at it and be like $900. Wow, that's cheaper than the MSRP of 975. But notice retailer number one's the better deal by $3 right now. So that's the one we're gonna stick with so far, but retailer number two, no tricks right there. What about retailer number three? Well, retailer number three, they have it listed at 950. So that is less than the MSRP. But if you buy within the next 10 days, you can take another $40 off. So all we want to do here is take the $950, subtract the 40 bucks, assuming we have uh, the best price right now. So 950 minus 40, we get a price of $910. 
So with that said, looking at all these prices, they are all relatively close. The better deal here is going to be retailer number one. Even though they were using the MSRP, which was the highest price, the discount that they're giving you is knocking you down just below these other two retailers. So retailer number one, that's the better deal. Let's look at the next question. So a book collector has an empty shelf on her bookcase. The shelf is three feet long. The average thickness of one of her books is 1.25 inches. About how many books could she expect to fit on the empty shelf, assuming the height of the book isn't an issue? Now, I reworded this question here um, versus what I showed you back at the very beginning if you were looking at that. But here we go. Three feet long. The average thickness of one of her books is 1.25 inches. You know, that can vary depending on how many pages are in the book and how thick the pages are. And we just want to figure out about how many. So we're going to round this off to the nearest whole number. Whether we round up or round down, I'm pretty sure the problem is going to tell you that. Well, what we have here is a three foot empty shelf and 1.25 inches. That's the average thickness per book. These are not the same measurement. So the first thing you want to recognize is that either you got to convert this to inches or you got to convert these inches to feet. Either way you do it, you're going to get the same answer. I just say, hey, look, three feet, we can get convert that to inches and get a relatively nice number. Whereas if you take 1.25 inches and you convert that to feet, that's going to be a fraction of a foot. So you're talking about more decimals or fractions. So I'm going to take this three feet. But first of all, we got to understand that 12 inches is equal to one foot. So let's do a quick proportion. Maybe some of you know to go ahead and just multiply by three, which is totally fine. But if 12 inches equals one foot, and we want to figure out how many inches are in three feet, notice I'm putting feet over feet, and I want to figure out how many inches we have here. Just a quick proportion. Again, some of you may know to just multiply 12 times three. And that's all we're going to do here in this proportion. 12 times three gives us 36. Cross multiply the other way, x times 1 is just x. So therefore, 36 inches is equal to 3 feet. So we've got our feet and we've converted it to inches. Now, the average thickness of one of her books is 1.25 inches. So we can do another proportion, or some of you may know, to just divide. Take this 36 and divide by 1.25. But if you don't understand that, a good way to solve this is using another proportion. So what proportion can we use here? Well, one book on average is 1.25 inches. So I'm going to write that down. One book is equal to 1.25 inches. And just like I had feet over feet, inches over inches, now I want to put book over book and inches over inches. Well, we know how many inches we're dealing with here, 36 inches for that empty shelf. And we're trying to figure out how many books. So I'm gonna put my X books over here on this side. Again, notice I'm putting book over book, inches over inches. A real good strategy for solving proportions. So let's cross multiply here. One times 36 is 36. This is equal to cross multiplying the other way. X times 1.25 is 1.25X. So now we have to do one additional step. Up here we did not have to because the X was already by itself because we took X times 1, which is just X. Here we need to divide by this 1.25. And again, some of you may have known that right off the bat before even doing this, but I want to give you that alternative technique just in case you know you can't figure out whether you need to be multiplying or dividing. So basic equation solving here, we're dividing by 1.25. This is going to give you x by itself. And let's just go to the calculator and do that. I think we're going to get a decimal here. But again, we're looking for approximately how many books. So taking the 36, divide by 1.25. we get 28.8, so 28.8. So somewhere between you know 28 to 29 books, approximately. Now, that's not guaranteed because each book has a varying thickness. Some books may be thinner than 1.25 inches, and some books may be thicker than 1.25 inches. But the average thickness of one of her books is 1.25 inches, so somewhere around 28 to 29. I highly doubt on the multiple choice test that they would give you 28 for one answer and 29 for another. And if they did, they would have to tell you whether they want you to round up or round down. Um, sometimes in some instances on word problems, you round down regardless. But I just want to throw that out there, somewhere between 28 to 29 books. All right, the last one here. 
A quick bread recipe calls for three ounces of water for every four ounces of flour. A baker has added seven eighths of a pound of flour to a mixing bowl. What is the approximate amount of water the baker should add if he is following the recipe? So we want three ounces of water for every four ounces of flour. Ounces, ounces. A baker has added seven eighths pounds of flour. So again, we have that different uh, conversions or different measurements, ounces and pounds. Well, 16 ounces is equal to one pound. So that's one thing we need to know here. Well, why am I using this? Because if we have ounces and we got pounds, we got to get all of these in the same units. So since I have some nice numbers here, three ounces, four ounces, and this is a weird one, you know, seven eighths of a pound. I'm going to take that seven eighths of a pound and I'm going to put that over here on this side. And I just want to ask myself how many ounces is seven eighths of a pound. So X ounces. Some of you may know to just multiply, but again, I'm using that same idea of a proportion to get this answer here. So one thing you can do, seven eighths, a fraction, we can just quickly come over here and take seven, divide by eight. It's not gonna be that bad of a decimal, 0.875. So let's rewrite that as 16 ounces over X ounces is equal to one pound over 0.875 pounds. Just a little bit easier to type in decimals on our four function calculator there. So again, I just did the seven divided by eight to get the 0.875. Now again, some of you may know to just multiply and look, here's why we just multiply to get our answer because X times one, well, X times one is X. And if we take the 16 times 0.875, that's going to tell us how many ounces we have in seven eighths of a pound. It should be less than 16 because we don't have a full pound. We have seven eighths of a pound, almost a full pound, but not quite. So let's multiply this by 16. So we're looking at 14 ounces. Now again, some of you may be able to do that a lot quicker, uh, but just by multiplying, um, you can take 16 ounces. Maybe some of you are thinking about taking that 16 ounces and breaking it up into eighths. If you take 16 ounces and break it up into eighths, that's going to give you two ounces each, you know, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. And if you want seven of those, well, seven times two gives you 14. So 14 ounces is how much flour we have. So let's come and look at another proportion yet again. What we're gonna do here in this proportion is we're gonna say, hey, three ounces of water. So three ounces of water. And we're gonna say, hey, that's gonna be equal to, yeah, kind of sort of four ounces of flour. But what's important to note here, yeah, we got three ounces and four ounces. Clearly they are not equal measurements, but what I'm focusing on here is the word water and flour. Well, what do we know about this answer that we got back here? This was 14 ounces, seven eighths of a pound. That was referring to the flour. And now that we've got that pounds converted to ounces, I wanna put that 14 ounces over here because that's referring to our flour. And the question says, what's the approximate amount of water? So we don't know how many ounces of water, so I'm gonna say X ounces of water. Notice I'm doing water over water, flour over flour. And now here, we're gonna to have to multiply and divide. So let's take three times the 14, that's going to give us 42, three times 14, and then take the four times X. So we get four X. Cross multiplying. I have plenty of videos on proportions over at my website, but again, this is a mixed review covering you know various problems, but a lot of these did deal with proportions in this particular tutorial. So dividing by four, 42 divided by four, 10.5. So dividing by four on both sides to get the X by itself, 10.5 is equal to X. So therefore we would need 10 and a half ounces of water if we have 14 ounces of flour in a mixing bowl. And again, that 14 ounces came from the seven eighths of a pound. And you have to be able to recognize that these units of measurement are different. So that's gonna be a big hint that you need to convert these all to the same units of measurement before you start doing your, your mathematics here. And there you have it, that's three examples. Again, problems eight through 10 in the ATIT study manual, the mathematics section quiz. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.